back in 1997, the Star Wars Special Editions were coming out into the theaters. I was 11 years old, had never seen them in the theaters, and this was my opportunity to go see them on the big screen for the first time. I'd seen Return of the Jedi a few times on VHS, but I didn't really remember too much outside of the uh, skiff scenes in Jabba's Palace. And I was pretty excited for it. I had already actually been buying Star Wars toys and playing with them. Um, And this is just around the time that I started collecting carded figures and keeping them sealed because I thought that someday they'd be worth money. And I just thought they were a pretty cool thing to have. Now, back in March when they released Return of the Jedi, they actually gave away 150,000, which when I found out that number when I was researching this, I was like kind of astonished that it was that high. 150,000 Luke Jedi figures that uh, came on a special green card that said Star Wars Trilogy and it actually has the bot- the date on the bottom of the card, which is actually wrong. So it's something that I've needed forever. It used to sell for 50 to to $100 back in the day, uh, back when it, around when it came out. It was a pretty hard thing to find. And then I decided to go ahead and do my dil- due diligence and my collecting and track one of these things down. And what I discovered was kind of odd. Now here's the figure that I'm actually talking about, carded. Um, It's the same exact figure that came out in the regular Power of the Force 2 line available on red and green cards. And this is what I expect to find on eBay. Now, what I actually found was that most of the figures looked like this. They had fallen off the cards over the years, and most of the listings were obvious, where you could see that the bubble was just detached from the card. Now, at first I was thinking it was just because of poor ownership. Maybe they were just given out to people who didn't care about figures. I mean, I can't even consider a loose figure poor ownership but obviously it's like they tried to keep them in good condition but they kept them in the box but then obviously you can see the aftermath of what happened in all of these so then i kind of narrowed down my search obviously i wanted one carded for my collection but then i kind of started to notice this trend i started to notice that most of the figures that looked carded on ebay on coaster inspection were either taped back or glued back to the card i'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see the telltale sign on these guys is if you obviously you'll be able to see tape on it sometimes and then if you see any white under the edge of the bubble that's how you can tell it's been reattached brings us to now where i've got my red card original i've had that since 96 i think it came out and then one of these sets those are actually a different story these just sell these three packs at costco or sam's uh i'm pretty sure i got it at costco but they might have been available at sam's club too like a holiday three pack we got three random figures um I have these two already. The only reason I hold on held on to it is because that's my only green carded Luke. When I was actually going through my figures, I couldn't find him. Anyways, I've got this package. Um, this is the first time I've ever owned a Luke Jedi figure on the uh, theater special edition card. And the seller had pretty good pictures. It looked really good. It's in a star case. Um, I paid $36 for it, so not too cheap, not too expensive. Uh, it did show up in a shoebox, so we'll see how that goes, but it doesn't make any real noise when I move it around, so it looks like it's packed pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy open real quick so we can uh, take a look and see how I did. I specifically asked the seller if it had been reattached to the card. He said, nope. He um, said the card was pretty good. He said it wasn't completely flat on one, at one part, but it creases, which seems like a... Uh, a good deal to me. It was also one of those rare eBay cases where he, I paid $12 for shipping and I was like, eh, well, I kind of factored that into my bid. But it actually turns out that he refunded me like $5 and said I paid too much for shipping. And I was like, yeah, I kind of figured I did, but I don't make the rules here. I just abide with them as I destroy that Luke Jedi. So, star case, packaged pretty well. Wrapped in a little bit of bubble wrap. Unboxing stuff with one hand is a pain in the ass. Let me tell you. All right, so here it is to finally complete the uh, Luke Jedi trilogy of green card, red card, theater edition. And so there's definitely a crease at the top of the card you see there. So that kind of sucks. So there's no creasing, but at the end of the world, it's eh, some creasing at the bottom too. So not a really good uh, seller as far as describing accurately how uh, how it looks. It's really hard to pick those things up in pictures. I mean, if I don't hold it in the right light, you can't tell at all. But if I get in there and let the light gleam off of it, you can kind of see. But not not too bad. I think I might overpaid a little bit with those two creases, but 
pretty cool things about it. Um, it does have a not for sale uh, sticker up at the top there. This is it versus a red card. The card's backs are completely different just because it came out at different times. But I'm pretty happy with it. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of point out here on the bottom is that it does say, let's see if I can get this to zoom in and focus here. Return of the Jedi Special Edition, opening day, March 7th, 1997, Kenner. Um, funny thing is that was the opening day for this movie, but this thing wasn't handed out until the 14th the following week. But hey, I finally have one in my collection. Can't beat that. But basically the reason I made this is I want to let you guys know, if you're going for carded Power of the Force 2 figures, um, don't sleep on this because if the glue is that bad, I mean, I would imagine they're 20 years old now. The, the glue would have fallen off by now if, if that one is going to fall off. But who knows? I mean, this might be something to kind of keep in mind and pick up early. I mean, it's not even early, but early in your collecting. Because I think they're only going to get harder to find in a decent condition. Even though I made 150,000 of them, which is a stupid amount. Like, that's a, that's a lot. But finding them in great condition is really hard. Even on this one, I thought I did better than I actually did, but... Not too bad, I paid 36 bucks. Not the end of the world, not the best copy, but the bubble's really nice. The bubble hasn't been crushed, from what I can tell. And it's, most importantly, still attached to the to the card. But thanks for watching. I think I'm seven or eight, uh, no, I'm like four green cards away from a complete green card set and four freeze frames away from a freeze, freeze frame set. So those videos will come and I'll go through the entire set lineup. I just wanted to make a video telling you guys about this guy because it was kind of a pain to find one that was in good good enough condition for my collection. But thanks for watching. If you made it this far, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe as well. Thanks.